think too often we think of Merry Christmas being for someone else. Not, not for me. Yeah, I, I know people have a nice Christmas, but that's just not in the cards for me. You know, as we are in the season of Advent, which means to come, that is, what is to come is that Jesus has come into the world, and we celebrate that. I want you to know that Christmas is for you. It's for me. It's for all. And, and the key is, is where our head is at in the midst of it, not the circumstances, is what makes Christmas possible. I know sometimes people think, well, Barry, you don't understand the life I have. I mean, you're a preacher after all. And so like you walk on water. No, that was Jesus, not me. And uh, um, my life is messy, just like yours. My wife and I have to work at things just like you guys have to work at things. My kids drive me nuts like your kids do, and I drive my kids nuts like you do yours. I mean, life can be tough at times. And the crazy thing, when I'm working on a sermon, what often you guys don't realize, you think, oh, Barry is just giving out the wealth of his knowledge, and his experience is not like ours. And you know, actually, when I'm preparing, I found more often than not what I'm studying the week of, when I planned this a month or two months or three months earlier, I had no idea I was going to be facing and wrestling that topic that week. So as I'm prepared a message on peace this week, I want you to know I'm in the same boat as you. And what I mean by that, this has been anything but a peaceful week for me. Uh, it has been a kind of a long and a little bit of stressful. I, I didn't realize how much my mind was racing with different things. There's a lot of stuff was going on and, and, and moving parts, and I was just uh, uh, trying to get everything done. And then my daughter was making an offer on a house, her first house, and, and here the pressure, I'm giving her advice, and it could screw up the next 30 years of her life, not that I was worried. And, and, and uh, you know, all that stuff was just going on in my head. And I'm like, oh, yeah. The Prince of Peace has entered the world, and that's the topic, Barry. We need to work on this. You know, if not careful, we think of that original Christmas, the first Christmas. If only we could have been there. That was peaceful, and it was silent night, and we've glorified it into something that it wasn't. You know, you know that first Christmas? That poor girl was a teenager, who had to tell her mom and dad, I'm pregnant by God. Hey, that right there ought to be enough to go, oh my word, this was not. Hey, her husband almost left her. King Herod wants to kill her baby. She's in pain. There wasn't anesthesia back then. Hey, there was no you know, anything to, to make this easier. It was hard. And it was chaotic. It was confusing. And it was filled with surprises. Some of the surprises were good, some were not so good, some brought peace, and some brought a lot of lack of peace. Here's what I want to drive home. Christmas is the great multiplier. What I mean by that, whatever is going on in your life, for good or for bad, you come into the Christmas season, and guess what? It multiplies it, and that is your present reality and perspective and your feelings. So if, if you've come into this season, it's not going to fix everything. And if you've come in with pain, if you come in with turmoil, if you've come in with anxiety, if you come in with loneliness, if you, it multiplies it, unfortunately, if we're not careful because it kind of puts a spotlight on whatever we're dealing with. But here's also the good side. When, you know, if you're in a healthy place and you're good with your family, you're good with your friends, things are going well, it's also the multiplier of joy. And, and so that's where it gets a little confusing because if you're on the lacking side and you're hurting, and then you look around at some of the other people, you're like, oh, they get a whole look. And it, no, it's... The same God who's there for all of us is here in your life and in my life 
but a lot of it has to do with where we allow our heart, our mind to go. And, and you just got to recognize that when I feel myself spinning out of control, I'm the one who has to say, okay, God, I really need you. Because the very thing that the angel declared to the shepherds of finding peace is being possible is what I need. Here's the truth I want to give you this Christmas. Peace is not a circumstance. Peace is a person. Peace is found in Jesus Christ. Peace is found that God became man, entered this world in the midst of everything else. And you don't find peace in a bottle. You don't find peace in the job promotion. You don't find peace by unwrapping a present. You don't find peace in the next romantic relationship. None of that stuff can fulfill the emptiness that we have in us, our God vacuum, that hole that he wants to fill. See, the Bible tells us in these famous words you probably heard at Christmas time, read on a card, might not have known where it came from. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says, For to us a child is born, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. See, peace is a person. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. God's presence with us. Where God became man and entered our world, that's when peace really became possible. And it's our, our gift to be able to lean into his presence. It's kind of like when you have a friend who's there and you're just hurting and you're struggling and you can just kind of, oh, when they give you a hug or give you a shoulder to lean on, you're like, oh, thank you for just being here. That's the presence of God when we allow him. Now, here's the thing. It's in the midst of whatever is going on in your life. So peace is a person, but peace is in the midst of whatever is coming next. The second point here I'm going to bring up, it really comes down to peace in the midst of what's going on. And the bottom line I want you to hold on to is true peace is not the absence of trouble, but rather the presence of God. I don't like that. I want to just say, no, peace is when you get rid of all my problems. But that's not the case. See, it, it's in the, in the midst of pain, in the midst of hurt, in the midst of mess, he's there. In the midst of joy, in the midst of good, in the midst of grace, he's there. In the midst of pain and joy, he is there if I'll let him. So the question is, is not, it's not is everything around me fixed? It, it's actually... Am I willing to open my heart to the peace that God offers even in the midst of struggles? Oh, peace was needed in, at the first Christmas as much as I need it today. The world uh, today is overflowing with all kinds of uncertainty and uneasiness and unrest just as it was then. The angels told on that first Christmas to the shepherds, the lowest, lowest of the low basically at that time, Hey, there's a message of peace. There's a message of hope. Something great is happening. God didn't go to the palace. He went to the hillside where the lowest were kind of forgotten and pushed aside by society. And he started there to make it clear that all could receive this. The Bible says suddenly, and the angel was joined by a vast host of others. Oh, I love this. The armies of heaven. See, so often we have the little fat cherub that people have drawn up and say, oh, he's just a cute little angel. No, it's the armies of heaven. The sky, the sky is filled with the armies of heaven. No wonder they were scared. And he's like, it's okay, guys. Hey, hey, praising God. And they praised out saying, glory to God in the highest heaven. And peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. There was so much uncertainty and pain that was going on that first Christmas, but yet there was also joy and peace. Do you hear me? There, there's on one hand, she had all kinds of stuff that was going on, but all kinds of stuff was going on. And they seemed opposite, but they went right together. See, here's the goodness of God in our reality. See, so often we think, yeah, I'm supposed to just have faith, but here's reality. No, no God exists in our reality. 
right in the midst of everything that's going on. This is together that he comes in, and he walks us through the valley. He celebrates with us on the mountaintop. He gives us hope beyond what this world could give. I'm so thankful that in the midst of chaos, we can listen to Jesus' words. Matthew chapter 11, it says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. Oh, that was... That's applicable from then till now. We all at times carry them. And he says, what? I will give you rest. You, know, you, can, you can translate that peace as well. I'll give you peace. He says, how do you do this? He says, take my yoke upon you. Trade with me. In other words, let me teach you a different way because I am humble and gentle at heart and I'll find, you'll find rest for your souls. Oh, I found this to be true in my life when I'll just... Come to him. Oh, it's so easy to turn everywhere else because in the midst of stuff, I can turn to the wrong place. See, it's peace in the midst of whatever's going on in your life. I want to challenge you to remember what was going on here. I mean, Mary had already had the mess with her parents, probably on the edge of being kicked out of her family. They don't know if she's telling the truth or not yet. And, you know, then Joseph almost leaves her, but then an angel appears to him, and now he's saying, but is he mad? Is he not? Is he confused? And then Joseph has to actually raise someone else's kid. It's not his kid. But is his kid kind of, and yet not. And, and then you got King Herod. Oh, yeah, he wants to murder the baby, and he's actually doing a big hunt for the baby. And the government forces Mary to, to travel to this other town for some stupid census thing. And so she's nine months pregnant, not in a nice, comfortable car, but walking and on a donkey. And then it gets even stranger. Weird people just start showing up in the shed that she's for the animals. They say, hey, we heard about, you heard about what? Hey, who are you? And they're just shepherds that were from out on the hillside. She'd never met them. I can imagine she just wanted to be left alone for a moment. Would you guys just all go away for a second? <sighs> this was not a dream start for Mary and Joseph. And I know in your life, you might have gone through some mess. And it may not have felt like the dream start in your life. But the same God who carried her through that will carry you if you let him. Now, here's one of the most beautiful parts of this passage. You fast forward to what was going on and all this thing. And what did Mary do in verse 19? I just love this. Mary kept all these promises that she'd been given by the angel and by all these other, she, she just kept them in her heart and she thought about them often. She just took a pause and just pondered the goodness. She had all kinds of things that she could have complained about, she could have been upset about, she could have worried about, she could have been fearful about. Instead, she chose to lean into Christ as she held him, the baby. Yeah, there was all kinds of things that might happen. Yeah, there's a Herod was trying to kill him, but at a young age, she chose to put her trust in the one who was ultimately in control. Surrendering control is hard. I don't like it any more than you do. But that's the beginning of where the Prince of Peace steps in. See, the chaos around me may not change around me and it may not change around you. But that doesn't mean that the peace of God can't flow in. And I can lean into him in the midst of chaos. I don't know if there's an area of your life that you just need to let go of and say, okay, God, I don't know. I'm going to be faithful. I'll do what you want me to do. But it's a little crazy right now. You might just need to practice a little bit of what Mary did as she, as she just thought about it and she treasured these things in her heart. It, that's really an application of what Psalms chapter 46, verse 10 says, just simply be still, shh, pause, take a breath, and just know that he is God. He, maybe God's saying that to you today, to take a breath, and just know that he's God. That kind of stillness is seldom found in the holiday season. It's meant to be there. It's the theme throughout, 
And yet as we run and we run and we push and we go and we, we don't slow down to take that pause. It's in the deep breath and in the peace of quieting your thoughts and of just saying, God, I give it all to you. Everything and everyone, here you go, God. That's when you have a chance to hear and for him to speak into you. It's a pause that can happen at any time of the day. You know, I just love God for how he, he it doesn't matter what's going on. I, first thing in the morning, I can pause and just take in a breath and, and have a moment of stillness with him. I can do that during the day. I can do that as a drive. I, I, I can do that over lunch. I can do that on the way home. When I pull into the house, I can pause. I, I, you know, in, in the evening, I can pause that. It's a choice that we just don't take advantage of to recenter and refocus on Christ. But the good news is you could, and you can. But here's the problem. If not careful, you're like, yeah, this is a really important thing that everyone else needs, but I'm kind of the exception. I'm, you know, God loves others. God is there for them. God makes right their stories but this is just a mess, my story. No, this peace is for you. This peace is for me. If not careful, we apply the promises of God to others. And I'm, I'm one of the worst of this. When I, when I talk to my friends and my family, and when I talk to someone who is hurting, I, I'll absolutely 100% believe and with passion tell them, God loves you more than you know. He is willing to forgive. You need to let go of this and hold on to him. You know, if the hope is not lost, and I'll give them all kinds of wonderful reasons that in my own mess, sometimes I have a hard time bringing home. Because if not careful, we think it applies to the world out there and not to me as the individual. And if not careful, we turn to everywhere but him when we need it. See, it's easy to start going through social media. It's easy to just start reading the news. It's easy to just stream another show. It's easy to just go get busy and let the noise try and drown out our pain. But the problem is, is it's also multiplying our pain quietly without us realizing it. The Bible says that God offers a peace that's beyond what this world can do. Philippians chapter 4 says, don't worry about anything. Instead, what do we to do? We are to pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Let me just stop there. I want you to know that it is okay to pray for the elephant, for the big, bold, crazy thing, and to ask God to fix whatever it is, to ask him to step in and change circumstances. Tell him what you need. It doesn't hurt to ask for that, but I also want you in the midst of that to realize that he doesn't always answer the prayers the way we want. And by definition, miracles are not every day. It's not the norm. And sometimes that answer he knows better is in another time or later down the road or even possibly heaven because this isn't heaven. But I don't want you to stop asking. I'm amazed what if you don't ask, God doesn't do. And I, I'll pray big prayers. But in the midst of it, What's my attitude supposed to be? I'm supposed to thank him no matter what he does. I'm supposed to trust him no matter what. And then that spirit where I'm just saying, God, I'm just going to thank you for all you've already done. I've given this to you. That's when I'm able to experience God's peace, which is beyond anything of this world. A peace there that will guard my heart and my mind as I live in Christ Jesus. See, part of the paradox that we live in as a follower of Christ is we have a foot in two worlds. And both are true. See, here in the present, we have pain. We have, we have all kinds of problems. We have things that we got to deal with. And God shows up and does the miraculous from heaven. He enters into our reality. That does happen. But we also have one foot in heaven. See, once we give our life to Christ, eternity begins now, not someday. We are a child of God. He has promised that he will never leave us, never forsake us. And so both realities are true and it gets hard because I long for everything of this world, and some of that will be then, some of it's now. And yet I also have pain in this world. And so you know what prayer that I have found God will always answer? 
As I pray for the big elephant, I pray that God does the amazing. I've seen him do that. But one prayer I know he'll always answer here is that, God, would you, would you work in my heart? Would you give me the perspective I need? Would you help me to just trust in you right now? Would you change and reveal to me what you're trying to do inside of me in the midst of whatever is going on? See, as I pray that he would make me pure, as he would make me holy, as he would make me more like him, that is a prayer that God changes in me and answers every time. Because he'll use any circumstance, the good and the bad. And then that peace can start to enter in. Now, let me remind you, true peace, this bottom line, is not the absence of trouble, but it's the presence of God. See, Jesus came into this world to bring hope and to bring peace. And nothing probably makes that more clear than the gift that he gave us by giving his life, paying the penalty for our sin. You know, we, we celebrate this thing called communion, and, and it's something that's been done for a couple of thousand years since Jesus instituted it with his 12 disciples on a night when things were about ready to get really crazy, and, and they were going to be fearful for their own lives. He gave them something to help calm the storm, to remind them of what all really matters. This thing called communion, he, he took bread and he says, I want you to continue to do this until I return. And he said, take this, and it's going to remind you of my body that was broken for you. And he took juice or wine and passed it, and he says, I want you to drink this and it, to be a reminder that my blood is going to be shed for you. And in the midst of whatever storm is about to happen, there's a plan and there's a purpose that you can hold on to that I've done what you cannot do, in other words. It's so hard to slow down. But this is one of those traditions I'm glad that God gave us, that we hold dearly around here. And we're going to do it a little differently today. We're going to take actually an extended time going on about 10 minutes. And I'm going to ask that um, you would just be willing to do something that's not encouraged by culture. Slow down, not rush out. I know we all have things that we want to get to, and could I just encourage you to actually, for this next 10 minutes, just stay in the room unless it's really important that you need to get up? Because here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask that you would go to one of the tables in the room and from home that you would engage with us just as much. We have tables in the back. We have tables along the front. We're going to have volunteers. I'm going to ask, would you move now, please, and get in place? Our volunteers will get there to take care of you and help you. All I ask that you would do is when you get there, just pick up a napkin, and they will put the element of bread dipped in juice on the napkin for you. And then you'll take it back to your seat, and you take it as God leads you. I want to ask that you would slow down, take a breath. That you just be quiet and say, God, is there anything you want to say to me? Thank him for the forgiveness and grace that comes through the cross. And maybe today in this quiet moment, you'll quiet your own thoughts enough that you can just sense his presence, the peace of God that passes all understanding. If you you go, oh, I, I can't do it because I'm. if you need gluten-free, uh, it's right behind the sound booth. You're welcome for that as well. And if you don't feel comfortable and you just want to stay in your seat during this time, that's okay. You can practice that peace just right where you are. This last service, as I came up and took mine, I went back and I just sat there for a little bit. And I'm going to be honest, the tears just kind of started flowing because I was just, I was tired this week. And as I just poured my heart out to him on some things, I just felt led to just kneel and just turn and just put my head down on my seat instead of standing or sitting. So whatever God's called you to do, that's okay. Would you bow with me in prayer? Oh, God, you're good. You're so good. 
And Lord, as I run from thing to thing, as I fill my life with too much, so often I, I run ahead of you or I pull against you and I try and pull back. And God, I just, I want to be right next to you during these next few moments. And that's my prayer for each person here, that they would just settle right next to you and let you be God. They're God. Lord, for those who are hurting, I pray that you would bring healing physically, emotionally, relationally, whatever it is. For those who are anxious or down or struggling, I ask that you would be the calmness, that your Holy Spirit would flow into them. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for listening. I thank you for being here in this room with us. for walking through the down times, for celebrating the good times. It's in the name above all names we come before you. Amen. Peace isn't about being in control. Peace is about knowing who is in control. As you feel led, you can go to any of the stations and then we'll come back after a time for a moment of worship.
Wasn't that an awesome word? I mean, it's everything going on. All the deadlines, getting ready for this party, that party, running around, trying to get presents and gifts for everybody. Sometimes we get lost in what the true meaning of this holiday season is all about. And that's the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ coming down to earth for us. Take some time amidst all of this. Be still. Be with God. Seek Him. And He promises you will find peace and rest in that. Remember, if you need anything, prayer, resources, or support, head to university.church slash 